Yo, what's going on guys? Crispy Flakes here for today's video. We have every NBA team's biggest question mark. So as we go through all through the NBA teams, I'm going to try to give an answer to that question or really tell you guys if I think it's that big a deal or not. Um, so yeah, if you guys can do me that quick favor and drop a like on this video, would be greatly appreciated. This is an article by Bleacher Report, uh, Mandela Namaste. Link to the article in the description below if you just want to read it yourself. And uh, here we go. So the first one we have is the Atlanta Hawks and it says... How long a leash do the young guys get? And if you ask me, it should be pretty damn long because, I mean, it says right there, this team is extremely young. You got two new rookies on this team. Um, but you got to think about what the positives coming out of the season. Yes, they're not going to make the playoffs, but Trey Young is like years ahead of schedule. I don't think anybody thought Trey Young was going to be this good this soon. Uh, yeah, Cam Reddish is going to probably take a few years, man. I think Cam Reddish is definitely a project. DeAndre Hunter, I think, will be fine. Um, you know, as things progress, John Collins, of course, is suspended. So while that is a blow, it does give opportunities for other guys in your team to play and really develop. So, yeah, I, I don't think this team should be rushed into anything. Um, they should be fine if you ask me. Uh, next up, we have the Boston Celtics. Is the front court success sustainable? Uh, it, it definitely looks like a man. Like, I was pretty damn surprised when I saw that, like, Daniel Tice at that center spot was working especially the fact that jason tatum was spending most of the season at the fourth spot i was like there's no way that's going to work but it really is man so uh it's definitely a new i don't i mean it's like a small ball defense so i don't really see it's like a new type of defense we have seen stuff like that but uh for an entire nba season i am gonna be a little worried you know come playoff time when they have to go against joel Embiid and other great centers like that um but right now it's definitely working I would like to see them maybe lock down a bit more of a veteran player for the bench at the center spot. Now, they do have Ennis Cantor, but he doesn't exactly scream rim protection to you. Um, so, I don't know how plausible it is. Right now, they do have Robert Williams, who's, like, cool and everything, but still kind of coming into his own. Uh, but, no, it seems to be working out. A lot of good switching on defense, and they're playing smart basketball. So, we'll see how it operates for the entire season. Uh, next up, we have Brooklyn Nets. Can the defense cola size? That's a big word, man. So it looks like, can their defense maybe come together? Um, well, currently, Kevin Durant's not playing. He's one of the better defensive players in the, in the entire NBA. Um, DeAndre Jordan is not exactly the player he once was. So, yeah, I mean, once like Kevin Durant's back, that does fix a lot of issues. Um, but really, like in the long term of things, yeah, I'm sure this team could probably go out and maybe sign a few defensive wing players, and that would help out a lot. Uh, I, I might have just totally not answer that question right i don't know what the hell cole assize means man come on bro all right next up we got the charlotte hornets what's going on with the front court so that is the center position of course that they're probably kind of focusing on here um because of course you got pj washington at the four he's nice uh, miles bridges batum at the three spot that's that's you know that's good and everything but really that center position there is trade rumors of andre drummond going to the charlotte hornets that would be decent enough um because cody zeller is like a fine nba center he's not exactly going to win you like a playoff series but he's like decent enough his contract i think he has a player option after this season it's not like the greatest contract but it's not the worst either um, it, it just seems like that's like the next step in the process. You got Devontae Graham, Terry Rozier, Malik Monk, all those guys. Guard positions are nice. It's time to kind of beef up that center spot and really find that guy that can mesh well with P.J. Washington to have your long-term front court. Uh, next, we have Chicago Bulls. Can they finish games as well as they start them? Well, the other night, Zach Levine definitely finished himself one hell of a game, dropping 49 points and like 13 three-pointers. But, um... Yeah, that, 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 that type of stuff is something that comes in time and really just the team coming together as a unit. Because Kobe White, he's going to have those games where he might start off really strong. It's like, yo, Kobe White goes in there. It's like all of a sudden he's got like 14 points at half. You think he's going to finish that strong. But in reality, those rookies, um, it does take time for them to really put a full game together. Because the NBA season's long, man. I mean, it can be very fatigued. And when you're playing against the best of the best, the cream of the crop, like if you, like in college, you might be able to get away with taking a quarter off here or there, kind of slacking off a little bit, but definitely not in the NBA. So that's going to come with more experience. Um, next up, we got the Cleveland Cavaliers. Can this backcourt be fixed? Yeah, and that's and that's by making a trade. Um, it just comes down to a lot of people already had questions about the draft pick of Darius Garland. I think we all are convinced he's going to be a good point guard. Like, we didn't think that, oh my god, like, how was he drafted right there? It's more so who drafted him. The Cleveland Cavaliers had no business drafting Darius Garland. They just didn't need him. Now, I do understand that maybe the mindset was to put Colin Sexton on the shooting guard. Because he is definitely proving to be more of a scoring guard than he is a passing guard. 
But I mean, players like, I, I think like Jamal Murray. I mean, Jamal Murray's not exactly averaging 10 assists per game, at least the last time I looked. Uh, so it's like, you can have a point guard that's just a really good score. And I feel like maybe they should have just kept Colin Sexton at that guard spot and drafted somebody else. Um, and kind of worked on some of the other spots on the team because this team has a lot of other weaknesses So it was kind of confusing, but I think the way you fix it is probably making some sort of trade have that be Darius or Colin I'm not really sure which one though uh, Next up we have Dallas Mavericks. Can somebody else besides Luca show up late? Uh, yeah, eventually Chris Sops Porzingis um, He missed like damn two seasons not quite that much But pretty much like a year and a half something like that. So gotta give the man time, you know, we month into the NBA season uh, being a big tall dude like that just working on your athleticism in general having a lower body injury is going to take time to really get just that fit, uh, fitness level back up so yeah he'll be that guy eventually uh, it's just a matter of time and right now Luca's doing a hell of a good job just running the show kind of himself um, next up we got Denver Nuggets uh, will the real Nikola Jokic please stand up well maybe just lose a few pounds right no um thing about Jokic last year is like he was like it says right here he finished fourth in MVP voting that's damn tough to do in this NBA like nobody ever really expected Jokic to be that so it could be a little case of maybe a little bit of a regression um we know he's capable of playing the way he played last year it's just a matter of you know the great great players can sustain that for a very very long NBA career so is Jokic gonna kind of fall more towards instead of a superstar center maybe to just like an all-star center so uh, yeah, he just kind of has to get back to form. Uh, we got the Detroit Pistons. Are they really this bad on defense? Andre Drummond's been decent this year. Um, the Pistons don't really have, like, a true starting point guard right now because Derrick Rose has been coming off the bench. And it's like they got Bruce Brown playing a little bit of point guard. Now, Bruce Brown, I don't know how much you know about him, but his specialty typically is defense. But instead of be, you know, being like a shooting guard playing defense, now he's being asked to be the starting point guard of the team until Reggie Jackson gets back. So, um, yeah, when you, when you have your defensive specialist having to focus on other aspects of the game like that, it's going to hurt you defensively. Um, Tony Snell is, like, fine, but nothing special. Luke Kennard definitely is more offense than he is defense. And then Blake Griffin's had so many injury issues. Uh, that's like Markeith Morris has been asked to be a starting power forward a lot when Blake Griffin's out with injury and Markeith Morris has never been a great defensive player so I would say yes given the injury circumstance they are this bad on defense <clears throat> once they are all healthy it's still not like a great defensive team I ain't gonna lie but not as bad as what they've been um, next up we got Golden State Warriors oh we got another bitch ass word bro can the defense be anything less than cataclysmic um this season's just a washed, so probably not. You got damn Kai Bowman at point guard. You got Jordan Poole, Eric Paschko. Like, these guys are asking to do so much than what they probably signed up for. And, yeah, probably not. Not this season. You guys are probably going to get top three pick. Add on, add on to Steph Curry, D'Lo, and Klay Thompson. You guys will be fine next year. It's all good. Uh, we got the uh, Houston Rockets. Is the shot selection still good? So, this is kind of basing off of... Do they really even have shot selection anymore in the Houston Rockets offense? It, it seems like the case is to shoot three-pointers and drive to the basket and make layups. So at that point, it's not really selection. You're kind of being forced into it, which is why Melo did not really work out on that team because he was asked to play a certain way. Uh, the issue is that you have Russell Westbrook now with the point guard of the team, and that's never how... I don't mean I, I'm curious if Russell Westbrook lasts like long-term on this team because uh, like he just doesn't fit into the system. So... I don't know what happens first. Either Westbrook gets traded or Dan Tony gets fired and they get a new coach and the whole new system. I'm not sure. I, I feel like if the Rockets don't get to the point of where they want to get to this year, Dan Tony might possibly be out and they might go in a new direction and try to run a different type of offense because the hero ball with Harden, it ain't sustainable for a championship team. Indiana Pacers, can they shoot more threes? I mean, Malcolm Brogdon shoots a few. Oladipo definitely helps with that when he returns. Uh, you got Sabonis at the four, Miles Turner at the five. Both those guys can play on the inside, play on the outside. It's like, yeah, they could. It's just a matter of if they're going to and how the team's going to be ran. Um, they, they they got more than capable shooters on the team, Jeremy Lamb. So, yeah, it, it sounds like it's more so a coaching issue than it is a player issue. Uh, for the Clippers, should they upgrade the point guard spot? It depends what to, man. It, it, it depends your definition of an, up, of an upgrade because what I do like about Patrick Beverly is that he does bring that defensive tenacity and it's like sometimes that could just be good enough but if they're looking for more of a leader a guy that's going to get other players evolved out there 
then I've been saying this for such a long time. They need to look and bring it in a guy like Kyle Lowry. Somebody that's got championship experience now. His whole thing is slowing down the game and uh, getting guys open. Of course, he's got chemistry with Kawhi Leonard. So we'll see by the trade deadline. I, I would say like if the Clippers record is not like amazing by a trade deadline, if it's just kind of like, okay, it's kind of like basic record, then yeah, you can consider it. I don't think it's absolutely necessary though. Um, you really like Paul George, the way you want to get him the ball is either let him do his thing in isolation or just use him as like a catch and shoot player. And it's like, that's easy. Like Patrick Beverly can more than handle that. Um, Kawhi Leonard, I want to see him take a big step as a playmaker too, though. I think a lot of it comes down to him because that's the thing is that the ball is not really going to be in, in, in the point guard's hand all that much unless you want to get a natural facilitator like a Kyle Lowry. So, yep. Uh, Los Angeles Lakers. Can they make more threes? Once again, they got the players to do so. You know, Kuzma, Danny Green, LeBron James can knock it down. Uh, the issue, though, is that when your team's two best players, have that being LeBron and Anthony Davis, are not, like, just go-to natural pull-up three-point shooters all the time, like, that's, like, the huge part of their game, then, yeah, you're not going to be a top three-point shooting team because that's not how they get it done. So, therefore, that's not how they're going to run the offense. I think that makes sense. Um, for the Memphis Grizzlies, uh, so about this defense. Once again, extremely young team. Those young teams, they just don't really have like that. Now, if Iguodala were to play, it might be a little bit of a difference. Not a big-time difference, but enough. Uh, Jaron Jackson, I think, gets there eventually. But just time will tell. That's really like, like I, I, I never really like beat up the young teams like this, man. Because a lot of it is just learning and just developing yourself. Uh, for the MIB, can they take better care of the ball? Uh, how are they? I don't really know how they're doing this wise. The Heat are 27th in opponents uh, points off turnovers. Um, yeah, a lot of that way, a lot of that comes like down to like Jimmy Butler. Of course, you got like the positive aspect of Kendrick Nunn, just being this guy that came out of nowhere, became like a great score for this Heat team. But uh, no, I think a lot of that too is gonna be like um, I almost said Eric Spolstra. He definitely run a point guard, man. Like Goran Dragic, they they have like a, a good slew of veteran ball handlers. So yeah, they should definitely get there. I don't think it should, I don't think it should be that big of an issue. But if it is, maybe they do look and bring like a Chris Paul to kind of clean things up. Uh, Milwaukee Bucks, are the role players good enough? I think their role players are good. I think once Chris Middleton comes back too, um, that will help out even more. Do I think they're as good as last year? No, I do not. I, I I don't think the team is as strong as last year. But with that being said, Giannis just dropped a fifty point game. He made like he was like three for eight from three, which is like thirty eight percent, which is damn good for Giannis especially too. So uh, it's not maybe it's not so much about the role players. It's just like yes, you maybe you can slack a little bit in the role player department. But uh, Giannis, if they want this team to win championship, he just he has to go uh, another step, another tier beyond the S tier type of player he already is. Um, for the Minnesota Timberwolves, can they keep this up? I think so, man. Carl Anthony Towns seems like the perfect center in the NBA. Andrew Wiggins came into the NBA as one of the most hyped up players, and he's playing up to that hype. So, yeah, they're not really showing me any reason why they can't. I would like to see them, you know, uh, maybe invest in that core that they have, these two players, and maybe build around them in a better way. But, uh, no, I, I don't. they're not giving me any, like, indication, like, yeah, this team's going to suck pretty soon. They're playing good, man. Uh, for the Pelicans, uh, what's up with the bad luck injury? I mean, it, it usually happens to a few NBA teams. Pelicans, one of them. Of course, my Pistons, another one. Uh, it's just how it is. I mean, a lot of us thought that Zion was going to have some injury issues. I still think he needs to drop a little bit of weight. Lonzo Ball's had some injury issues throughout his entire NBA career. So, hopefully this is not, like, a sign of long-term things to come. And hopefully it's just, like it says right there, bad luck. Uh, for the New York Knicks, all of it. Maybe you get a top pick in the draft, man. Maybe you get, like, an Anthony Edwards or, um, what's that dude, man? Why can't I think of his name? Why can't I think of his name? Center, James Wiseman, yeah. So, just kind of, oh, they don't really need you. They got Mitchell Robinson. I like him a lot. So maybe Anthony Edwards or even LaMelo Ball would be kind of cool. Okay, see Thunder. Is the front court hopeless? Um, Yeah, Steven Adams doesn't seem like the same type of player without Russell Westbrook. I feel like he just, those two guys had really nice chemistry. You got like Gallinari at the fourth spot, which is fine. We know what he is these days. He's not going to like drop you 30 points a game and be like a superstar. He might get you about 18 points per game and, you know, just do his job. But uh, that's in that small forward spot, I think they got like Terrence Ferguson. What happened to damn Andre Roberson, man? He's been gone for a long time. You know what I'm saying? But uh, yeah, it's like Chris Paul's been nice this year on the Thunder. If I'm giving you my honest opinion, since Chris Paul is playing nice, it's time to trade him away. It's time to trade away Gallinari, Steve Adams, all of them, man. Like, 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 like sell Chris Paul while his stock's somewhat high, you know? Uh, same to go with all these guys. 
I just think it's time, man. I think it's time. Uh, Orlando Magic, can the offense be professional? So I guess that, yes, yeah, as they are ranked, uh, currently 26 in the offensive rating. Well, you got to think about it this way. Their lineup's kind of sloppy. For one, Vucevic is injured. That doesn't help. That's your all-star center from last year. You got Markel Fultz at point guard. We all know the the uh, history of him as of right now. So I would say Markel Fultz is basically a rookie point guard. Like, he's not a rookie. He's played a few games, but he's basically a rookie point guard. Aaron Gordon at the three spot, sloppy. Jonathan, no, 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 I'm sorry. They got Aaron Gordon at the four, Jonathan Isaac at the three. So Isaac's not a big-time scorer. Markel Fultz is, like, still learning how to play basketball again. Evan Fournier is fine. You got, you know, it's like, they'll get there. I just think a trade to kind of even out this lineup needs to be done. 76ers, who is the primary shot creator? They don't really have one, man. I mean, like, it's not really Joel Embiid because you want to catch him more, like, in the post-up and stuff. I was hoping Tobias Harris would be that because Tobias Harris, like, he should, in theory, be able to do that. And Ben Simmons. Come on, one of you guys got to step up and be the playmaker of this team. Or the, I'm sorry, the shot creator. Uh, Phoenix Suns, can they stop following so much? Uh, how, how many how many fouls have they got? The Suns rank 29 to 24 fouls per game. A lot of that's just discipline. So, yeah, they could. They just got to be more disciplined. That's the best way to answer that one. Portland Trailblazers, uh, will front court issues be their undoing? I mean, if Melo just dropped that 25-point game, so... I don't know that Melo's playing like that won't be an issue, but once Zach Collins is back, Nurkic is back, front court should hopefully stabilize a little bit. Sacramento Kings, can they liven up the offense? Uh, probably not when like De'Aaron Fox and Marvin Bagley is injured. You know, it's not going to really help out all that much. Once those guys is back, sure, I think they'll be pretty dynamic. They had a pretty bad start to the season, but still plenty of time to uh, turn things around. San Antonio Spurs, is this finally it? I mean, I said into the season that I wasn't a big fan of the DeMar DeRozan, Marcus Aldridge combination. Uh, since saying that, or not since saying that, but as like they're one and nine, I was called a Spurs hater. And it's not that I'm a hater; it's just I wasn't a fan of that. Of that, and you know, I've proven to be right, man. Like, how it was, and uh, yeah, I, I think that it's finally it, man. I think DeMar DeRozan and LaMarcus Aldridge both end up traded at some point in the season. It could be by the time you're watching this video, man, because I'm officially on holiday break, so I'm recording this before that. So yeah. Toronto Raptors, can the team hold up through the season? Uh, Kyle Lowry seven injury issues. Pascal Siakam is going to be a big question mark just because like he's playing like a top power for the NBA. Like I said, it's a long NBA season, so doing that for an entire season can get can you know injuries can pop up. But uh, I don't know. I'm sure I'm. I mean, they're already not holding up, so uh, we'll see what happens. I suppose. Um, like, like like that's like a weird question. Like, how do you really answer that? It's like, I don't know. We'll see how their injuries do. Uh, Utah Jazz, where's the ball movement? Um, yeah, I thought Mike Conley was really going to be the fixer of that. And, of course, Joe Ingles is, like, a solid playmaker, too. So, I actually thought this team was going to move the ball uh, as one of the best teams in the NBA, but it really has not been the case. Uh, then we got the Washington Wizards, finally. Do they need to score 120 points every night to have a shot? You have Isaiah Thomas, that point guard. He ain't going to turn to Patrick Beverly all of a sudden. So, yes, that's probably it. Uh, but, yeah, guys, that is the end of the video. Man, I love doing these, you know, just question videos like this. A lot of fun. Great time to do. Uh, but, yeah, man, thank you all so much for watching. Be sure to drop that like. Subscribe if you're new to my channel. And peace out, my friends.